America. Welcome to week 18 of Camping Corner. I'm Tony. I'm Mallory. And it is Friday before Memorial Day. Please remember, it's not just the official kickoff for summertime. Please take some time this weekend to remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice and pay homage to those that uh, keep our freedoms and uh, give us the capability to do all the things we love to do. So thank you and a big shout out to everybody. Active duty, past duty, uh, former service members. We love you all. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for your service. So this week we're going to start off with what's the buzz? What's the buzz? So here we go. First picture. Yep. This nice little little buggy pulling the fifth wheel. My favorite comment from someone was, it's a Ford so it can do it. <laughs> I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's really just parked there. and but It's all for show. It, it's it all for show. It doesn't actually tow. <laughs> All show, no go. I'm relatively sure that it would just crush the the model. And and, and somebody somebody's gonna comment. I know they're going to. I'm gonna say it's a model A. It might be a model T. I don't know. I have some friends that do know, and I'm sure that they'll comment and, and let us know what that is. They'll but, correct you, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's definitely a Ford. Ah. <laughs> uh. I, I'm thinking it's just for show, too. I don't know that it actually is going to go anywhere. No, I don't, I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it. So the other exciting news, though, campgrounds. Did everyone, in your comments below, did you see our facilities manager, Chad Smith, and his phenomenal video? He is a star in the making. He is. Yeah. He's a little little star, but he's he wants to be a big star. He wants to move on up. So yeah, there's some information, you know, about our campground in that video too, as well. Yeah. I did hear this morning that there are two spots left in the campground. So you can reach out at 765-533-6611 and take one of those final two spots for Memorial Day weekend and hang out. But they wouldn't be your neighbor though, would they? They're, they're not too, they wouldn't be too far. Okay. You could be... Close to Tony's neighbor. Yeah. I've become such a celebrity that I have to have security in the campground. <laughs> His campsite is gated off. <laughs> it's, it's a gated community. It's a gated community. So I, I have my security guards. I have uh, Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, <laughs> Captain Morgan. Uh, no, but let's. I have to just point out for a minute. I Tony, live in the angry orchard. Tony's truck this morning. <laughs> I came to work looking like the Clampets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He has all of his campground furniture. Patio furniture. Patio furniture in the back of his truck. Stacy, I kind of thought maybe you kicked him out for a minute. <laughs> and all I got was the patio furniture. Yeah. <laughs> and I did laugh because I, I strapped it down last night when I loaded it up. Yeah. And I did the, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to. You've got to. <laughs> so the funny thing about the patio furniture, I thought, that we were going to buy a smaller set of patio furniture for the campground. To which my lovely wife let me know, no, we're taking the big giant set that we have at yeah. home and I'm going to buy a new set for the house. You go, Stacy. I don't know. We spend more time on it at the campground. I don't know why we wouldn't have the new stuff at the campground. But Either way, she's getting new stuff. She's happy. You betcha. So the next question, weekend camping trip. Which one are you bringing, Tony? I already know which one you're bringing. I, don't, I did find some wine that I liked. Really? I did. Okay. Back during the, the it was that, it was during the boat sport travel show, it was cold out, and it was the oh. wine that you warmed up, the spice wine. Yeah. And you drank it warm. Yeah. I drank the bottle. Oh. That's the only way to go. I'm sorry, that's my, I'm, my personal. Well, I'm, I'm afraid anything that has a cork or anything like that, I'm afraid that really it'll go you bad. You don't want it to go bad. Yeah. So I got, yeah. It's, it's good for the environment. I'm feeling you. So mine's obviously wine. I'm not a huge beer drinker. There are two kinds of alcoholic beverages I buy, that, that I drink. Yeah. The kind I buy and the kind somebody else buys. Yeah, so you're not picky. But we did have some people say sweet tea. Okay, so let's let's just say this. 
I really think it's un-American to drink non-sweet tea. I think realistically, you should simply just be or able to order a glass of tea. Yeah. I want a glass of iced tea, and it should come sweet. <laughs> That's the way it is in the South. Yeah. They got it, you know. I, I'm sorry. I drink unsweet tea a lot. I used to love I used to love McDonald's sweet tea, which was fantastic until they decided to get rid of styrofoam cups. Now they give it to you in plastic cups and the ice melts so fast that it's mm. just it becomes unsweet tea by the time you're halfway done. By the time you're done with it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I drink a lot of unsweet tea. Sorry guys. I am falling in love with strawberry lemonade. Ooh, that's a good one. And then somebody sent me a message and told me to take strawberry lemonade which Wendy's has really good strawberry lemonade, take the ice out of it, take some of the ice out of it, and put strawberry uh, vodka mm -hmm. in it, and you can make strawberry lemonade alcohol. Well, and we had a lot of people say, we had some people say fireball, which I am for, because in the fall when you're camping, some hot apple cider and fireball, that's where it's at. That's, That's a good, good one. Yeah. There are also Angry Orchard hard ciders. Yeah. If you take Angry Orchard or any of the hard ciders of your choice and drop a shot of either Fireball or Hot Dam down in it, then it becomes um, a spot you, a cinnamon, apple, ice cold, alcoholic beverage. Right. Yep. We used to call it Damn Angry. That makes sense. It's good, it's good stuff, though. It's <laughs> good. What's your cocktail choice at the campground? Yeah. What's your non-alcoholic choice? Because we did have a lot of people say tea, say sweet tea. So some people may have their non-alcoholic choice. So what is that? So I have a question about tea. Does anyone at the campground put the jug out and make fresh sun tea at the campground, but not at home? Oh, I do it at home and the campground. Yeah, love it. I, it's just the greatest thing. All I, my I, I, that's one of my I remember growing up, and my mom always had a jug of tea yep. sitting on the corner of the sidewalk. Yep. Go out and see what the tea looks like. Yeah, my mom didn't really talk like that, but it just makes it funny. <laughs> oh goodness! So we got a, a great picture from the Ridge family. Sent us this great picture of them enjoying their new hideout. We yeah. absolutely love that they did that. That's super awesome. Yes. Thank you, Justin, for sending that to us. It's awesome seeing you guys out and enjoying your camper. So love it. Absolutely. Then we had a couple people in response to some of the things that we've posted before. So Bruce likes to haul his travel trailer with his Ford. He said Ford all the way. All, all the way. All the way to the service center to get worked on, or all, just kidding. Bruce is I'm, going to be your friend now. I am not. I'm, I'm, I've, you know, I've owned everything under the sun. <laughs> I have. I've had a Ford truck. I've had. I've had a couple Ford trucks. I don't think I've ever had a Dodge. We do have a Jeep, though. That's a. We've Still had a same family. Jeeps. Yeah, you're, you're there. We're there. This is my wife. It's my wife's. I get to ride in it. Don't let me fool you. <laughs> So then my friend, we were talking about the Blackstones, the Blackstones and how awesome they are. Uh, Bub, um, one of my friends, Matthias Ritter, uh, posted that he literally had just put his together. He's taken his first camping trip this weekend. He's yep. going out with the rest of the Yahoos uh, camping this weekend at Camp Modoc. So he mm -hmm. bought his own camper and Mainly because he's like six foot twenty six, and he can't fit on anybody's dinette. And everybody told him you can't, you can't sleep in our camper anymore. You got to get your own. Camper. You got to get your own. <laughs> so he's yeah. super excited. He's got an awesome little camper, and, and he's going to be camping this weekend. And I'll see him this weekend. He's got he said he's got some kind of gift for my wife, and my wife said she was scared. <laughs> well, the next one is from Rayanne. So, Rayanne, it was great to see you guys on Saturday when you came in. Also, thank you again for your camping decor for my office. I truly appreciate it. But this is her picture 
of driving this big guy down to pick up our first camper. So exciting for them. I'm super excited for their entire family. So Mallory's office is across from mine in the dealership. Yes. And the other day when she got that, that, piece of decor she was like somebody watched the episode and gave me this it was it was super awesome i was super excited yeah. and of course uh ron shepherd sent the uh pictures we were talking about flamingos and stuff like that and camping signs and all that great stuff so got a great little display set up there i gotta find out where i can get if anybody knows where i can get one of those wooden signs where they they carve into them you know I wanted to say the McMillans and you know BYOB or whatever. What happens if the camper stays at the camper or whatever? There you go. I need one of those cool signs for my kids. Uh oh. Around the web. We have we have a blank page. Yes. So as you can see, America. Our page is blank. All it says is around the web. This has been a hit, so let's keep it going. So yes. Dan, our producer. He wants our, the element of surprise on this next segment from us. So that's why we're showing you that we really did not. We don't know what's coming. Holy moly. <laughs> Is that built out of plywood? That's wood, right? That That's that's definitely wood. What's the little thing? What's the little design thing over the, the rear tire there? What's that little... Looks like a harp. <laughs> we, they needed, the harp business is booming. They needed some other design elements on top of, you know, you're mixing up your materials, right? That's like the end thing. Mix up your metals and your wood designs. Got some windows on there, some recycled windows. Would that be, that little thing above it, would that be like art deco styling? I don't know. I just... I want to laugh the whole way around with this. So I want to know what the inside looks like now. <laughs> let me ask you this, not to offend anyone. At a guess, what would the driver of this unit's name be? <laughs> I'm going with Cecil. <laughs> Cletus, yeah. I was, I was trying to think of something Maynard. like Cletus. <laughs> ah, it's a beaut. Oh, goodness. I'm, you know what? I, here's what I'm going to say about this. Mm -hmm. I bet that was built, that was purposely built, and I bet that was built by a manufacturer. Really? I do. Well, I, yeah, I could see. I do. It matches, you know what I mean? Like the brown and the white match on the truck or the chassis. And I don't know what the, you call it. the proportions are. Are there. Are, yeah. are there. For an RV, so I'm I'm going to venture to say that some manufacturer built that back um, early '60s. Yeah, you could you could be onto something there. It's not. It's not the most hideous thing we've no, ever looked at. No, the next one. Holy moly! <laughs> See, now is that the most hideous? I don't know. I mean, what, what, uh, it's like set up, look at all the wires. They are set up to live off the grid. You know what? Yes, they are. Those solar panels on it. That, and based on the, the, the background out in the back, the, the, the landscape. Yeah. That is somebody trying to make contact with aliens. Do you think they're like out in Nevada or something. And the owner of that wears an aluminum foil hat. Yeah, it looks the movie Independence Day is just playing in my head right now. <laughs> I think it looked like something you'd see out of Mad Max. Like post apocalyptic. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Alien alien fit really well too, but this just screams some guy wearing a mask going around taking water. There's a lot of canned goods in there. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about trunk space. I can get it all in there. Uh, I where is how's the how's the front of it connected to the car? It's there's like, like strap. A, it's got a, a strap. it's got a brace and a strap up there. 
you know how everybody watches when a when a camper pulls into the campground? Yeah. Just just imagine what everybody'd be saying if somebody pulled in and something like that. I you know, I'm the type of person where I can wear my expressions. Like I don't I don't have a good poker face a lot of times. And I definitely wouldn't have one seeing this thing roll through the campground. What is the thing on the front next to the door? The little box. That looks very modern. Oh, it's like it looks like a lock box or something, doesn't it? That's where you keep your shoes. You can't track dirt in. Yeah. Come on, Dan. You don't want to dirty where, that thing. It's where your flip flops go. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, so the first picture versus this one. So the first camper that was built out of wood with the harp. <laughs> right. This one probably worse. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I feel like this one is barely holding it together. This feels like my emotions some days. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is holding on by a thread. There is no way you can take that down the road without losing some. Oh, yeah. I mean, st- I would be scared to be the vehicle behind this person. It'd be like... The insulation would be blown out. It'd be pink yeah. snow everywhere. Because there is some insulation there. I mean, you can see it. Yep. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So, obviously, did this thing break down and they were... <laughs> so, if you notice, this, the camper is a fifth wheel. Yeah. That's been adapted to what I would assume what would be a front-wheel drive Cadillac. They just hacked off the back of it. And then it broke down, and they tried to pull it with the U-Haul. Yep. The, the U-Haul tow bar there. Or maybe they just made it that way so they could tow it with their truck. Like, they turned a fifth wheel into a class C, C. so then they could hook to it and, and then it broke their truck. Then it broke down and they could pull it with their truck. That's right. <laughs> and whoever built this at some point <clears throat> stood in their pole barn and went, I bet Elvis had one just like it. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> I would almost guarantee there's a velvet Elvis painting inside that camp. Probably. Gadget corner. <laughs> this week, we're not really talking about much of a gadget, but that's fine. We're talking about probably, other than backing up the camper, one of the other most debated things at a campsite. How to start your campfire. <laughs> Everybody's got an opinion, right? So We should have added in there, shame on Dan, not only should have we had the picture of the fire, but also... A grill, so when you're cooking stuff on the grill. So picking on us guys, not being sexist, I know there are a lot of ladies, including Mallory, who typically starts the fire at their campground. My wife, Stacy, who does a ton of cooking on the grill at the house. I do the majority of it at the campground, but she does the majority of it at home. If there are eight guys standing at your campsite when... Um, when you're building a fire, there are eight simultaneous or some variation. And then there are 126 opinions from those eight guys on how to build a fire. Yes. I'm trying to build a fire, all right? You might as well pour ice cubes in there. You never get a fire going that way. You don't crumple a newspaper up. You twist it, twist it lengthwise to simulate kindling. That's why you get it gone. Yes. And... Two of them will whisper to each other and go, he don't even know what he's doing. (laughs) And same thing with the grill. Yeah. You know, you're cooking steak. Oh, you turned that too early. Really? (laughs) Charcoal stack wrong. Yeah, Yeah, like there's always something. Can't believe you're using propane instead of charcoal. Yeah. Can't believe you're using charcoal instead of propane. I like to use my smoker. (laughs) Tastes great coming off the smoker. Well, really, are you eating at your camper or at my camper? Because I do it this way. So I have a story with me being in the millennial generation. My father-in-law was with us one time and my husband was starting the fire, right? 
and he couldn't get it started. And my father-in-law goes, well, don't you have a newspaper or something you could put under there to, like, help? My husband turns around so fast. He's like, Dad, I am 30 years old. I don't even own a newspaper. <laughs> For the most part, and I'm not a millennial by any means. But most people don't have newspapers. Having a newspaper. Yeah, I keep the newspapers right next to my phone book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great video on social media of the grandpa trying to have his two grandsons make a phone call with a rotary dial phone. Yeah. Hysterical. Now, I'm relatively sure it's probably fake, but it's still pretty comical because they don't understand. Shh. Shh. When people had zeros in their phone numbers, yeah. they were the worst. <laughs> worst. You had to wait 10 minutes for it to come yeah. back around. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, zero's all the way over. Crap, oh, how do I restart? Did you just... Okay, yeah, yeah. Alright. Seven. Then... Just... Just... Just fill it a little bit. I'm old enough that I can remember people that had party lines. And you'd pick it up and like the people three houses down oh. were on the phone. And you could either listen... Or you'd just hang up. My anyway. favorite was dial-up internet. When I didn't, when I wanted to call my friends and I didn't want my dad to be on the internet, so I would just knock the phone off the receiver. So then that way, after like a minute or so, it would boot him off the internet. I had to do that like three or four times before he'd give up. And I'd be like, all right, I'm calling so-and-so <laughs> since you're off the internet. <laughs> so let's do the top six. Things that are important about camping. Yes. So we've kind of posted a few of these already on our Facebook page, but. We did this on last week's episode, but somehow somebody edited it out. <laughs> Dan, our Not executive Not naming any names, Dan. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> so number six was affordable vacationing. Yes. Does it cost you thousands of dollars? No, not one bit. Number five, taking your home with you. You just take everything you own, your bedding, your dishes. It's all yours with you. Number four, you get to travel on your own schedule. No, I, I, I don't have to be there to check into my hotel room at 11 and check out by 10.52. Right. Yep. You're there and ready to go. Number three, you don't have to travel to be far away. Definitely love this one because you don't. Sometimes we go to a campground only 30, 40 minutes from our house, and you feel like you're escaping everyday life. You camp in your backyard and feel like you're away. Hey, we do it sometimes, too. Definitely works. Number two, fresh air and family. What more do you need? Exactly. Number one, no lines, no crowds, just relaxation. So, like we've said before, and like my sign Rayanne made me, camping, the original social distancing. It is most certainly that. Yep. I'm going to social distance this weekend. Me too, but see, I'm going to be in my backyard. In the camper. I'm going to be at the campground. I'll be waving at everybody <laughs> when they drive by on their golf carts or whatever. So, we know a lot of you are going to be camping this weekend. So, we better see some camping pictures. Yeah, it's the, the campground's officially open in Indiana today for overnight camping. It's, it's a big deal. Guys, we understand. We've been there. We've been dealing with the same thing. Everybody's so excited about, about being out. Take that opportunity to get out and have a great time. If you're in the campground, please send us some pictures. Let us know how your trips went. Funny things, you know, nice things, things you learn, camping hacks, tricks. Your opinion on how to start a fire. Your opinion on how to fix steaks. You know, anything like that. <laughs> we, we we love doing this this show, guys. We have a lot of fun. So Yep, we do. It is. We we laugh about it and so on like that. So I I'm out. I'm out of stuff. All right. Well, you guys enjoy your camping weekend. Send us some pictures and we'll see you next week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Remember, put your flags in a half mass. See you later. See ya.